I would like to say that that is not being to say that out of arrogance or pride, no. Out of only explaining what is necessary for everyone here to hear. Alhamdulillah, we are coming from a very noble family that goes back to Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from Hassani and Husseini. And it is very well known in the Middle East. And Alhamdulillah from a rich family. That we were Alhamdulillah, our home, I just went to, before I came here to a home. It was uh, the biggest home I saw in England, that home. But my father's home, which we lived in, is more than 100 times bigger than this home. The whole way that the entrance of the house is as big as this hall. Allah give, Allah gives whom He like. That's why our home was full of awliyaullah. Scholars, they come, they sit, they speak with each other from all over the world. Because my uncles were big scholars in the Middle East from Egypt and they were the highest level of scholarship that any fatwa that cannot be done in Egypt or in a Middle East country they send it to my uncles. I am not saying this for any reason but only for, for us to know where are our limits. We knew, I knew Maulana Sheikh Nazim when I was nine years of age. And my brother was seven years of age. We were being raised on the laps of Allah. We know what they like, we know what they dislike. Because we grew with them. And when I was 15 years, 15 years of age, it was the first trip, 13 years of age, it was the first trip for me to Damascus to see Grand Sheikh Sheikh Abdullah al Faiz al Dagestani. And that because of a, a situation happened, an event happened that guided us to Grand Sheikh. One day, my father has a, way, a big, he's a wholesaler of fab fabrics. By his store, there is a huge masjid built by the Ottomans. We go and pray Asr after my uncle because he prays every Asr there. We were three brothers sitting there and praying. And Maulana Sheikh Nazim appeared, that Sheikh, we don't know him. And he looked at my brother and he said, you are Salim? He said, yes. And then looked at the other one, he said, you are Adnan? He said, yes. Then looked at me, he said, Hisham? He said, yes. We don't know him. So he prayed with us. After the prayer, we told our uncle, he took him to, to his office in the masjid. And he said, I have been sent by Grand Sheikh to take this family to him. That's what you have mentioned. But this is the story. I visited Grand Sheikh when I was 13 years of age. And from that time, until, not now, but when Grand Sheikh 1973 passed away, 
we would, we did not miss any f weekend with him because we were studying or any time that we are free to go see him to drive a, a very difficult drive to see him and we were raised with him he used to get us to his room we used to live at midnight we reach at 3 in the morning we pray tahajjud with him we pray all the prayers pray fajr pray ishraq comes back to beirut another time every week every other day when we have no school from that developed a love to Mawlana Sheikh Nazim. You are sad because of Mawlana Sheikh Nazim passed away. I'm more sad than anyone because my life was gone between his hands. I gave him my life. No one gave him his life here. I, I sacrificed my life and my brother's life. We sacrificed for love of Mawlana Sheikh Nazim, love of Mawlana Sheikh Abdullah. And some people here, they are speaking bad in, in things that they don't know, and even his sons they don't know. But Allah knows, and Prophet knows. They were not there even. No one. 60 years. I'm now 70. I knew him nine. 60 years with him. His children, how many years with him? Less than me. But Allah knows best. How many times? They accused Mawlana Sheikh, may Allah bless his soul. Accused him of espionage against the government of Syria. His files are bigger than this room against him. Who saved him when they throw him between the two borders of Lebanon and Syria? One time, we're going to Damascus, and Hajj Anna said to me, Sheikh Nazim is now one week disappeared. And they don't know where is he. I have to go with my brother to ask about him. And in Syria, if you ask about a prisoner, you and your family will go into the prison to question you. But we sacrificed ourselves and we went inside the building. Ask, we, we know people, we know how to go in. We are w very well known in Syria and, uh, and Lebanon. Went and we saw a man coming from the other side. He saw us with turbans and so on. I know him, but from where I know him, I forgot. But I know that person very well. He used to come with my uncle always, all the time, because they are both of them authors and scholars. He said, what you are doing here in this building is, I said, I'm looking for Sheikh Nazim. He said, who is Sheikh Nazim? I said, he is my father-in-law. He's been uh, trapped here uh, somewhere. To, they took him. In Syria, when they take you, they move you from one department to another. You don't know where that person is anymore. He's lost. He said, wait here. Went inside some office, he came out. The, uh, the security, they said, you don't know who is that? 
I said, we don't know. He said, this is the Minister of Defense. Minister of Defense, Allah sent him to sign the paper of Maulana or Maulana would have been stayed in prison. And then we took him and went. I don't want to say too many stories about these issues. But we served Maulana Sheikh with full heart because we love him. And subhanAllah, if Grand Sheikh doesn't love us, he doesn't tell me to marry Maulana Sheikh Nazim's daughter and to my brother to marry her cousin. <coughs> Maulana used to love us more than anyone, Grand Sheikh. The only two people that can go in his room with no permission is us. We helped a lot. I don't like to say that. We helped whatever we can, we helped. And what we get in the, in, 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 in the, on the other side, slaps from everyone, right and left. No one, and I, I will challenge, one can raise his finger and can say that he did for Maulana anything that showed him the highest in the world, except me. I did two conferences, every conference 10,000 people, 157 speakers, 157 speakers, not 10 speakers, 15 speakers, 20 speakers, 157 speakers. We arranged for them to give speeches in the house of, here would say, you call it house of common. There we say the Congress, in the Congress. Maulana was the highest level speaker in the whole conference. He spoke to the congressmen. They came, we invited them, they came and attended him. And all the speakers were sitting on the, like this stage, and then the higher stage is Maulana Sheikh Nazim. Show me one that did anything for Maulana Sheikh. They call themselves Khadim or they call themselves servants or they call themselves... No, we are the Khadim. We are the servants.